Donald Trump, as you all know, is not a fan of the January 6th commission looking into the events of January 6th. They're of course investigating it and are now looking to potentially interview Donald Trump's kids, you know, individuals who are very much involved in the White House. We're talking Ivanka Trump, we're talking possibly Don Jr. And here's what we know. The committee asked Ivanka to sit down with them for an interview. She hasn't been subpoenaed yet. She was the top advisor to her father when he was president and supposedly implored her dad to call off the violence on the day of the Capitol riots. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th riot requested that Ivanka Trump speak to lawmakers saying in a letter that they would like to discuss conversations she had witnessed or participated in relating to the president's plan to obstruct or impede the counting of electoral votes among other areas of interest. By the way, the committee also subpoenaed and obtained phone records associated with Eric Trump and Kimberly Guilfoyle, that's Don Jr's fiance, and of course, former advisor to Donald Trump as well. But of course, Trump loves to cry and he's crying about all of this, which isn't surprising. What is a little bit surprising is that he tends to think of his children as literal children in a statement To the Washington Examiner, Trump said this, it's a very unfair situation for my children, very, very unfair. The January 6th panel is using whatever powers they have. They couldn't care less, they are vicious people. It's a disgrace what's going on. They're using these things to try to get people's minds off how incompetently our country is being run and they don't care. They'll go after children. So. Let's just let's just remind you all of the children that he's talking about here, starting with Eric Trump, who is 38 years old, Ivanka Trump, who's 40 years old, and Don Jr., who is 44 years old. So, like the whole thing about going after children, if like the January 6th panel was like, yo, where where's Barron? Like, we want to do an interview with Barron. Like Barron didn't serve in the White House, he's literally a child and that would be ridiculous. I'd be the first one to say like, don't do that, it's a bad idea. We're talking about adults who served in the Trump White House in some capacity and also engaged in communications either leading up to January 6th or on the day that the riots were taking place. So it's just to infantilize them like this is ridiculous. but. Trump himself is a baby, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised. I don't know. Uh, Francesca, what do you make of it? Woman, children, I don't know. You know, they act like kids. They've, you know, silver spoon kids. So the one thing I'll say in Trump's defense here is that he's doing one better than Logan Roy, right? Like, don't you feel like he's (laughs) at least kind of standing up for his kids? Like, yes, my kid, my, the children, think of the children, you know? So I feel like even, you know, Logan Roy wouldn't stick his neck out that far, but we will see how he's like, oh, okay, just not a, just not Ivanka. Take Eric. <laughs> Take Tiffany. Tiffany's got stories. Tiffany doesn't have any stories. You didn't let her anywhere near the halls of power. That's true. He did her a favor though. And and look, I, I, I disagree. Exactly. I, I think 100%. Logan Roy would definitely defend his kids if it somehow benefited him, right? We're talking sure. about like fictional characters in succession. But Trump- Oh, they're real. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind (laughs) of. Um, But you know, Trump of course is concerned about his own ass, which is why he doesn't want them to be interviewed. Uh, Eric Trump actually um, had answered some questions with, uh, you know, invoking the fifth of, you know, his, his, you know, I plead the fifth basically. He didn't answer a single question. Um, But there's another part to this story that I thought was really, I was going to say fantastic because <laughs> it's just so entertaining. So um, apparently, uh, Michael Cohen has confirmed uh, the favoritism that Trump has toward one of his children, Ivanka Trump. Apparently, um, he had admitted that Trump had specifically told him in the past that if any of his kids had to go to prison, by the way, a little interesting that they were even having this conversation in the first place, but if any of his children had to go to prison, uh, there's one that he would want to prevent uh, from having to do that. So let's let's watch what Michael Cohen had to say, and uh, we'll discuss. 
And here's a question. Would Donald Trump himself ever offer to cooperate to shield his daughter from any potential legal troubles? <laughs> not, not a chance. Not a chance. You may recall that there was the district attorney's case here in um, for Trump Soho, where it was either Don or Ivanka was get, were in very big trouble as a result of lying about the number of units that had been sold. And Donald said it to me. I mean, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't said directly to me. He goes, if one or the other have to go to prison, make sure that it's Don, because Don would be able to handle it. I mean, that should automatically give you an idea in terms of you know, um, how he thinks. But Donald cares only about Donald more than he would care about his children. Mm, that is the, mo yeah, that is, I just think it's demonstrably true, uh, that last part. But like, Donald only cares about his, himself, not about his children. Yeah, of course, like, it's it's so clear. I wonder if he, if he had to choose between his own ass and Ivanka, though, that might get a little tricky, but, you know, don't say Ivanka's ass. Trump choosing between his ass and Ivanka's ass is just too much of what he wants to hear. <laughs> I've thought about Ivanka's ass, and if I had to choose between ass, like nobody asked you, sir. Nobody you asked seen, you. That was a misspeak. Have you seen her ass? It's a but perfect Ivanka's ass. ass so it's a take done. Junior's ass, very flat, very flat, very flat. Concave. He's not. He's not working out. You know. He's not. He's not. Maybe Ivanka. he can go to prison. Do some squats. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> but but like it's just so funny that he's so clear who he wants to throw under the bus immediately. Again, back to succession. It is very Kendall Roy. John and I were talking about that earlier today. But I don't know. Like Don Trump Jr. has been just doing weird, like his own dad impression, maybe drunk, maybe high on a little cocaine. I don't know what it is, but you know, the guy's not well. So the idea that he would be able to handle prison. I don't know. I think Ivanka would be able to handle prison better than Don Jr. And I think Ivanka would elicit way more sympathy because you know, uh, you know, white girl sympathy is unlike any sympathy that exists in the the, the whole wide world. Let's just it be, is a special place. Yeah. Look, let's just let's just be clear about something. None of them could handle prison. Like assuming <laughs> assuming we're talking about actual prison and not like Martha Stewart prison, right? Sure. Like. And and to be fair, I mean Martha Stewart was imprisoned for insider trading, which members of Congress do all day, every day. And then you know you've got House Speaker Nancy Pelosi essentially defending it. But putting that aside, no, they would all crumble in prison, <laughs> in real prison. And look, based on what we are hearing from the panel investigating January sixth. It doesn't seem like Ivanka Trump is implicated in that mess. It seems like a bit, all we've heard about her is that she like hit her dad up and was like, "Yo, you, you need to end this. This is a, this is a bad look. I don't like it." Right? Um, but I, when it comes to the rhetoric that we heard from Don Jr., even till this day, just like nonstop incitements, nonstop lies about how the election was stolen from his father. They know what they're doing. They know they're mm -hmm. riling their base up. They're persuading people that the election was somehow stolen from their father. Even in situations where you know you look at the uh, officials who got elected statewide, and it's Republican, 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 but looks like you know Trump lost in that state, mostly because of his handling of COVID. It's just like yeah. this inability and unwillingness to live in reality and accept defeat, accept that Trump lost. It's mm -hmm. just, it's really, it's dangerous, irresponsible. And now we unfortunately even have NFL stars regurgitating nonsense about the election, which we'll get to a little later with Aaron Rodgers. But here's where we're at. Yeah. The last thing I'll say is, you know, I keep on thinking, you know, like, all right, well, if if someone's in prison, can they still run for president? The answer is yes. Somehow, yes. <laughs> there is nothing in the Constitution that prevents you from while in prison still running for president. They're they're like, oh, it's politically bad. But no, it's not politically bad because politically we live in hell and everyone would love that if Trump were like somehow won and he had like a Nelson Mandela moment and they could pretend like he was anything like Nelson Mandela. Like he they would love that. So even the best case scenario is still awful and I apologize because I know we're trying to be a little bit lighthearted with this one. <laughs> um, so I always come back to that.
he could still win the presidency from jail. That is pretty uh, terrifying. But don't worry, folks. Uh, he's not going to spend any time in jail. Well, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? The Democrats are going to the DOJ. Eric Trump. <laughs> Maybe like there's a possibility, but I I don't even think that's going to happen. I mean. George W. Yeah. Bush and Dick Cheney committed literal war crimes. And Democrats did nothing when they had a supermajority in Congress and Obama is president. Trust me. Yeah, let's Trump will be fine. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.